usually I don't recall him sending me anything, so I don't know. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County, April 11, 2024 meeting. This public hearing is being televised live on St. Mary's County Government TV 95 and the county's YouTube channel. It will remain available for on-demand viewing on the St. Mary's County Governmental, I mean, Government YouTube channel. My name is David Willenborg. To my left is the Vice Chairman Richard Watts. To his left is Member Barbara Hill. Just seated is uh, Richard Shin. Um, George Aness to my right. And then we have um, Tammy Hildebrand. And to her right um, would be um, Chris Beaver, our attorney. Um, in the audience, we have uh, Susie Dean, our recording secretary, Kevin Hall, our inspector, and Deputy Steve Myers, our alcohol enforcement coordinator. First thing on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, Member Hill seconds it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Next is approval of the meeting minutes from March 14th. Has everybody had an opportunity to review them? Yes. Do we have a motion to approve them? Make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from Thursday, March 14th. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a second from George. Um, I have one issue with them, and that's on the second page. And, or is it the second page? It's the last page. Uh, it says Dave Dent and Joe Curley were present at the meeting to represent the SMCLBA. Mr. Dent and then whatever, the bills that would be affecting. So there's a, there's a typo, so there's some words missing. Good catch. So besides the correction that needs to be done, you want to table it and we'll fix you want to it, table it the next time. And we have 90 days, right, to approve the minutes. I've There's never a, been there is a period that you have. Pardon me? Is there? I've never been given a duration, but we usually get it done by the next meeting. Okay. This could actually be done online also, I believe. No. Online? Yes. Sending oh. an email to everybody and asking. Why don't you, just, ta why don't you just table it to the next meeting with the, in the amendment and we'll come back and we can vote on the amendment? Motion to table it? Um, yeah, I'll make a motion to the table. Second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Violations. Racing in. Employee, Holly Elaine Bailey. The above individual, Holly Elaine Bailey, was the employee of a license holder and sold or provided alcohol beverages to an individual under the age of 21 years in violation of 6-304 of the alcohol beverage article of the annotated code of Maryland and 5.04J of the rules and regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Please swear in. Yeah, where's my sheet? I haven't memorized, but. <laughs> where's the sheet? I don't know. It's, Do you it's hereby on declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. Holly Elaine Bailey. It's 13451 Old Oak Drive, Charlotte Hall, Maryland, 20622. Okay. Please come forward and have a seat. So did these events take place? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Beaver, would you read in the facts? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The facts underlying this um, violation are as follows. On December 28th, 2023 at 4 p.m., uh, the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent the Sheriff's Office confidential informant 18 years of age into Rayson Inn, located at 26755 Stone Corner Lane in Mechanicsville, Maryland. The confidential uh, informant entered the premises and retrieved an alcoholic beverage 
um, specifically a 750 milliliter bottle of Doppler Sangria red wine and a can of Zin peppermint nic nicotine pouches and placed them on the counter for purchase. Uh, the clerk later identified as Holly Elaine Bailey failed to ask the confidential informant for identification for proof of age and completed the sale of the alcoholic beverage uh, and the tobacco product. The confidential informant then exited the store with the alcoholic beverage and the uh, tobacco product and made, then made contact with Corporal Patrick Handy and Deputy Stephen Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit, where the confidential informant provided a description of the sale. Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers entered the establishment and made contact with Miss Bailey. The officers identified themselves and informed Miss Bailey that she had served an alcoholic beverage um, and a tobacco product to an underage sheriff's office cadet, uh, confidential informant, I apologize. Miss Bailey uh, stated to the officers that she had thought that she had seen this individual in the store before. Uh, Miss Bailey was informed by the officers that an offense report would be completed and that she, would, uh, she and the licensee would have to be appear before this board. Photographs of the alcoholic beverage and the tobacco product uh, were captured on the officer's body-worn cameras and were placed into evidence. Miss Bailey appeal, appeared before the district court with regard to um, the violation of the tobacco um, uh, health code for the, pay, uh, for the sale of a tobacco product to an underage individual um, where Miss Bailey pled guilty to the tobacco violation. All this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. You're welcome. Members, any questions regarding the, um, the sale of alcohol? Uh, Ms. Bailey, do you, can you, re, uh, I guess, recollect in your, your words kind of what happened that day? No, it, I'm going to start by saying it was like, Everyone was shocked because that's a thing for me. I'm pretty by the book and on the rules. It was a, a bad week altogether. So, no, I don't have much recollection of that day, except when the officers walked in. I was just as shocked as everybody else. I mean, I, I do remember the girl that came in the store. I do remember that she looked very similar to a a regular customer that comes in that I had carded several times before, but it, it doesn't matter. It was my lack of better judgment that got me in the situation I'm in now. And um, I, I didn't, I, I should have carded her and I didn't. I still have three children that are under the age of 21, one that's under the age of 18. If someone would have sold to one of my children, I would have been up there wanting to know what they were doing to fix it, why it happened, all that. There's no excuse. I messed up. The The owner of the store provided the the light up UV pins to hit the the IDs with, the the scanner, the uh, you know, the books to show us what the IDs look like when we put them under the UV, all the instruction we needed to know to card. There's signage all over the store that says all customers, we ID no matter what. It's all over the doors to the alcohol coolers. The manager and the assistant manager, when I was trained, hounded it into me and on the normal, I card. It's on our whiteboard, under 35 card. The training was there. It was nobody's fault but my own. Okay. I mean, I, it was my fault. Thank you. Thank you. You actually uh, answered a few of the other questions I had as well with that statement, so I appreciate the, your candor. I had no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Okay. George? Just, it, was it a busy day? Were you distracted? Uh, like I said, I had a very busy week. My husband was gone for a few months, and I had... Um, a lot coming down on me, but that morning I got a call. I had gotten a positive diagnosis for MS, which it's not like bad, bad, but I, I, I have other health, health issues. But then 30 minutes after that, like right after I walked into work, I got a call of my skin cancer diagnosis. So it was an extremely <laughs> bad morning for me, but that's still 
not an excuse because if it was that bad that I couldn't pay attention and use my better judgment, I should have called out. I should not. I mean, I, I don't mean to get upset, but like I said, I have three children that are minors. When I was 18, my very best friend was killed by an underage drunk driver. I have thought every day since it happened, what if it wasn't the police that came in? What if it was just a random kid and I sold to them and they went out and killed themselves or somebody else? It's my fault. You know, my managers, they, they hounded into everybody. It's, it's my fault. That's it. Thank so, you. sorry. Any additional questions? I just have one. How long have you been employed at the school? Um, since the end of June, I believe. It's either the end of June, beginning of July. Are you still employed? Yes, but I was suspended for several days without pay, and I was written up. Okay. Um, I, if, if it wasn't for the fact that I am by the book and I don't call out and I follow the rules and am very dependable, I probably would have lost my job. Um, thank God I didn't <laughs> because I really need it, but um, it, it, I wouldn't blame them if they did fire me. I really messed up. Ms. Bailey, I did have a follow-on question. I guess with the, uh, again, I appreciate your, your honesty and everything. When your your managers, you know, seem to be pretty, um, you know, pretty by the book as well. Um, is there any, you know, support from them, you know, to when you come to them and say, hey, look, I'm really having a bad day. I probably shouldn't be on the register today. And if I would have went to my manager, because I've known her for several years, if I would have went to her and said, I'm having a bad day and I need to go home, she, will, she would tell me to go home. It's not one of those. She would stay and work a double shift if she had to to give one of her employees a break. It's not a matter of that. I just, you know, I shouldn't have been there. And, and I was, and I was dealing with stuff and I thought I was dealing with it okay, but you know, I wasn't, I wasn't paying as much attention as I should have been. Um, it, it's, I would have, should have, could have. <laughs> it's not, I, I mean, I know it. better, I know better now, but that didn't help then. Okay, thank you. I have nothing further. Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. It will move into the penalty phase. We need a motion. <clears throat> Anybody else can jump in too. <laughs> um, I guess I'll make the motion. Um, based on the facts presented and the testimony received um, regarding the above individual, Holly Elaine Bailey, uh, as an employee of the license holder selling uh, the or having sold. Provided alcohol beverage to an individual under the age of 21 years in violation of 6-304 of the Alcohol Beverage Article and the Annotated Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Um, make a motion for a fine of $100. Okay, we have a motion for a fine of $100. Do we have a second? We do not. Okay. Do we have a follow-on motion? That one fails. Motion fails. You guys could have seconded it and we got a discussion, <laughs> but I'll I'll make a motion reluctantly, um, certainly in, in consideration. 
However, um, because we're doing this again within three years, well, um, it's, that's, from it's, licensee, that's, not the that's the licensee. Yes, sir. That's yeah. Um, I, um, I'll make a motion. Uh, Holly Elaine Bailey, uh, as an employee of a license holder and sold or provided alcoholic beverages to an individual under the age of 21 years in violation of 6 304 of the alcohol beverage article of the Annotated Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County um, propose a $150 fine. Okay. So we have a motion for $150. i will second the motion. We have a second. Okay. Discussion? No discussion? All in favor? Aye. Nays? Opposed. Nays. The ayes have it. Um, the vice chairman and the chairman um, opposed. Okay. So, Holly, you have um, 10 days to pay the fine. And you may, within 30 days of today, appeal the decisions of the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County. Do you understand? You can go over and see Susie. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Violations. Licensee. Robert Bradley um, Brizzy. Sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 in violation of 6-304 of the alcohol beverage article of the annotated code of Maryland and 5.04J of the rules and regulations of, this, of the alcohol beverage board of St. Mary's County. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. Robert Brizzy, 40268 Waterview Drive, Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Okay. Please come forward and have a seat. So, sir, did the, um, the sale take place? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Mr. Beaver, would you read the facts? Mr. Chairman, uh, the facts underlying this violation, um, uh, these violations are as follows. On um, December 28, 2023, at 4 p.m., the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office alcohol, unit, alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a Sheriff's Office confidential informant 18 years of age into Racing Inn located at 26755 Stone Corner Lane in Mechanicsville, Maryland. The confidential informant entered the premise and retrieved an alcoholic beverage, specifically a 750 milliliter bottle of Doplin, or, sorry, Duplin Sangria red wine and uh, a tobacco product, a can, specifically a can of Zin peppermint nicotine pouches and placed them on the counter for purchase. The clerk later identified as Holly Elaine Bailey, um, failed to ask the confidential informant for proof of age, um, and completed the sale of the alcoholic beverage and the tobacco product. The confidential informant then exited the store with the alcoholic beverage and the tobacco product and made contact with Corporal uh, Patrick Handy and Deputy Stephen Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit, where the confidential informant provided a description of the sale. Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers entered the establishment and made contact with Ms. Bailey. Uh, the officers identified themselves and informed Ms. Bailey that she had served an alcoholic beverage and a tobacco product to an underage sheriff's office confidential informant. Ms. Bailey uh, acknowledged um, the officers and said that she thought that she had seen this individual in the store before. Ms. Bailey was informed by the officers that an offense report would be completed and that she and the licensee would be issued summonses to appear before this board. Photographs of uh, the alcoholic beverage and the tobacco product were captured by the officer's body-worn cameras and were placed into evidence. Uh, Ms. Bailey did appear before the district court um, and pled guilty to the tobacco violation. All this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. You're welcome. Members, questions? Yeah. Mr. Brizzy, um, can you uh, describe the the training for your employees, uh, both whether it's 
you know, upon first hire, annually, monthly, whatever your recurrence is. Could you I'd take us through that? I'm very proactive, and my expectations are for every single one of my employees to be trained as soon as possible when they come to work, based on the trainer's schedule, our own schedule, et cetera. Okay. It is, do you have any sort of recurring training, or is it just uh, upon hire? Mm. I mean, as far as recurring training, we have recurring reminders, you, you know, to do what you were trained to do. Sure. Training is pretty. How are those, uh, how are those reminders, uh, uh, I guess, articulated? Verbally, written on the whiteboard. There's a calendar right here regularly, every day. Okay. Can you describe some of the other uh, um, aspects about that training um, do you require 100% ID? Do you, um, what, what sort of no, sir, aspects of that training? It's an ID check. That's a business decision that I make. It's a conversation that I've had with the board in the past. Um, my expectations are for them to be carded when it's necessary. Okay. So are you suggesting that the, you leave it to the employee to make that decision whether it's necessary or not? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I think how to phrase my question. Could you, so you said it was a business decision to, to leave that in the, in the employee's uh, determination. Um, I can, explain. can you explain about why that is? Well, well sure. Yeah. I guess, it, you know, and at the end of the day, I think not just myself, but every single licensee, we're expecting our employees to make that judgment decision, whether it's the Wawa, whether it's the racing, it doesn't matter where it's at, where uh, uh, ultimately, we have, as a society in our community, expect our clerks to make that judgment decision. You know, at the end of the day, the business decision is, is that if I see your, your store, I don't know your name, Richard, you come in my store every day, you buy a pack of Marble Lights and a Bud Light, and I don't card you. First time that doesn't happen because I know your name, the 100% ID check is irrelevant. So when you have a convenience store, the, the business decision part is you could stop here, and we could check your ID every single time, even though we know your name. Or you could stop here where, unfortunately, it's a little more convenient for me not to show my ID at this store. So that's the business decision part of that we have to make a decision. If it was consistent across the board, you had to show your ID for every single age-restricted item that you purchased, then there would be no business decision needs to be made there. It, it would take the idea of the clerk to have to make that decision part of a normal transaction. Here's your ID. Here's my payment for my age restricted item and we go on our way in other places in our world it's like that it's not like that here we are, we are expecting for our clerks to make that decision and it's unfortunate that sometimes it's not made correctly sir sure. so so in you know in lieu of a statewide or even countywide mandate that would require a 100 percent id um which in, in lieu of we don't right um, it, you're right, it is up to the licensees. Uh, however, there are several licensees, many licensees uh, in this county that do require 100% ID. I understand that is, you know, a business decision. Um, just seems like that, you know, given that, that you are, are here before us again, unfortunately. Um, I mean, again, sir, I, might well, be my, something my argument to yourself, to sir, would be is that if we all wanted to fix the problem, is that, that that's how we would fix the problem, is that we would all have to do the same thing, not have to make that business decision. I mean, you know, if we're, you know, at the end of the day, you know, for us to fix the problem, we got to fix the problem, not just continue to, to hide from sting to sting to sting to sting. You know, where, what are we doing to address the problem, the training, this, that? So I've done very proactive. I had a liquor license for the better part of 25 years. I don't want to be here any more than you want me to be here. At the end of the day, no one that I'm aware of that's in this business knowingly sells to an underage child, period. You know, so at the end of the day, how do we fix the problem? Not the beat down about how we got there. You know what I mean? You know, but at the end of the day, we can train, we can train. So, you know, again, we all, we you know, we can only control ourselves. You know, she, she said it. Why did she not card? She said she should have. She should have been carded, period. I 100% agree with it. Why did she not? She, she said it to you, sir. I don't know. So, so do you feel a 100% ID check would have potentially solved this problem? In this instance, maybe. You know? Okay. So 
if and let me also say too, sir, you know, working in the practical world, to, you know, that we live in and work in today, that when again, when you see someone every single day, to it it makes your your customer service or you know, at the end of the day, it's just not. I don't know how to explain that to you. To uh, you know, again, you, you know, you, Richard, might decide to stop at another store because they don't check your ID because you're obviously old enough. Yep. So, so let me ask my question again. Do you, do you feel a 100% ID check policy would have potentially prevented? I'm mean, not The obvious answer to that question is yes, sir. If it's a okay. 100% ID check, the obvious so then, answer would so, be yes, so whether why, it's my so, situation or anyone else's for that matter. Okay. But my question to you and to everyone else is why is it that we don't do that across the board for everyone and take it th that out of the well, so I'm expression gonna, of the clerk? It, I'm going to ask a follow-on question then, right? If you feel that 100% ID check would in fact prevent this sort of thing from happening, why does your store not have a policy of 100% ID check. The business decision, sir. Okay. So, fair enough. <clears throat> Any more questions? Mr. Brzee, how many employees do you have selling alcohol? Uh, at the moment, I believe is six. How often do you provide training? And what have you done in the context of this event? Uh, any follow-up with your employees? Well, my updated policy since then, as the last time I was in front of the board, I made the same, I had the same conversation, 100% ID check, you know, this, that, for any age restricted item. I, nobody since then wants to hear that. For whatever reason, nobody wants to hear that. I don't know why, you know, I can only control what I can control. After I play that conversation in my head over and over again, my policy moving forward is going to be, if we don't know your name, we're gonna to have to check your ID. So that's how I'm going to fix the problem for myself. And I feel like that that's the best thing that I can do with what I have to work with at the moment. Thank you. Anything else? No, I was going to ask a question, but it was, he answered it. Okay. My question was going to be, so given whether it's hundred percent ID check or not, going forward, what would you do that? That, that is what, that's what I've done moving forward, and that's the closest that I can get for myself that I think is realistic. Right. Because, you know, there's a saying, right? It's insanity is when you keep doing the same thing over and over. And, uh, and, and sir, I do agree. And, I, you know, as long as I've been around this liquor board, we're doing the same thing over and over and over again. It, you know, it, we're going to change that today, sir. I, I think. I mean, I, you know, I, are we, sir? I mean, I don't know. I don't think that you and I can change it today. That's the truth. Well, but Mr. Brizzy, who sets the policy in your stores? Myself. Okay. Who could mandate a 100% uh, policy in your store? That would be myself. Okay. So, so you could implement that, but am I hearing you say that you're not going to? No, sir. What you said, what you heard me say, was that my policy was going to be moving forward. If we don't know your name, we're going to request for you have your ID. In my mind, that has done two things has eliminated the fact of that if we don't know you, we're going to check your ID. From the other side of that, from the customer service side, this, the practical side of that, and again, and I'm sure every single one of you have witnessed this, your own self and being out in public, that someone who gets requested of their ID that is obviously old enough gets, I don't know, pushback is the right word. There's, you know, at the end of the day, you're creating, I don't know, confrontation or pushback, whatever the situation is. So. The practical side of that, of asking someone for their ID who is obviously of age, either becomes offensive to them, you know, whatever the situation is, that, again, myself, I go out and ask for an ID, I give it to them. It's what they're doing their job. I understand, you know, but the practical side of what the clerks deal with, not just in my store, but it's everywhere, you know, so... Again, society, to, you know, has created that to some extent, you, you know, but with that being said, if I know your name, Richard, Hey, Richard, it's good to see this, that. At that point, I feel like that we should be have well enough relationship with our customers that we know your name, we know you're old enough. So, Mr. Rizzi, does, uh, does the, the risk of potentially offending someone or creating a conflict outweigh the risk of potentially selling to an underage minor? Sir, I would, I would, offer, the same, I would offer that same question to the people at B that, that make the rules. Because, I, you know, again, I, do I agree with you? Yes. But in a practical sense? 
but Mr. Rizzi, you set the policy for your store. Yes, sir. You, you can set that policy for your store. You're, you're absolutely right, sir. I mean, you know, there's no argument there. Good. Okay. okay. So, so. Well, it's been asked. I want to ask again. What sort of policy changes then will you make going forward to ensure that this does not happen again? Are you looking for a different answer, sir? Or are you looking for, I mean, I'm looking for an honest answer, sir. I'm sorry? I'm looking for an honest answer. I gave you my honest answer. I, you know, I came in here with, a, with the idea that I needed to solve a problem that I can only control a certain part of. So you know, that's how I can control the problem and fix the problem for myself is if we know, don't know your name, we're going to ask for your ID. Okay. Any other questions? No, sir. Okay, we'll move into the um, penalty phase. Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion. Based on the uh, facts presented and the testimony received, I'll make a motion uh, for the license holder, Robert Bradley Brizzy, for the sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 in violation of 6-304 of the Alcoholic Beverages Article and the Annotated Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. I'll make a motion for a $1,000 fine, three-day license suspension, and the abeyance held from the first violation. You don't have to make a motion for that. That's automatic. That's automatic. Very well. Uh, and uh, RAST. RAST training. Okay. We have a motion for um, $1,000 with no abeyance. No bans. Um, RAS training and three day suspension. Do we have a do we have a second? I'll second that motion. We have a second. Um, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Your suspension will opposed. Call for opposed. Are we? Did you call oh, for opposed? No, it was all everybody raised hands. Anybody opposed? I'm sorry. Opposed. Okay. One opposed. My apologies, I was. Didn't see. Okay. So your, your suspension will start as of um, Friday morning. Tomorrow. And it will be, yes, until Monday morning. Okay. So, and uh, you have, let me read the rest of this. You have 30 days, I mean, you have um, 10 days to pay the fine. And you may, within 30 days from today, appeal the decision to the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County. Okay. Okay. Next on the agenda. No, no, you have a second charge, sir. I'm, I'm going to do oh, that. I That's thought the you next said part next of the agenda. agenda. Okay. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Just keep it as honest. Okay. Yes. Commission of Acts on Licensed Premise, contrary to state law in violation of Section 504B, Acts contrary to law of the rules and regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County, to wit, distribution of tobacco product or paraphernalia to minor in violation of section 10-107 of the criminal law section of the Maryland Annotated Code. So, um, Mr. Brizzy, did this event take place? Yes. Yes. Okay, would you please read in the facts? Um, unless the board would mind, we can stipulate the facts already presented in the prior violation, if that's all right? Yes, sir. That's fine. Okay. So we'll just move into to the um, penalty phase. Do we have a motion? You can't hold anything in advance. By the way. I'm sorry. Sir. I don't think you can hold anything in advance. You can do as you please. This is not under the matrix. Okay. Yeah, you can do. It's, yeah, it's, it's the board's. It's within the board's discretion. However, they'd like to do it. Okay. This doesn't count as the. Uh, this. No. The, okay. No, no. Very good. Hmm. Well, I am. I think that the, the board was very lenient the first time you came here. 
very lenient. I think it was um, um, it was during COVID. It was a five hundred dollar fine and four hundred held in advance. Um, COVID was was running the muck. It was very difficult for businesses, and the board was very very compassionate with a hundred dollars. I remember you brought in your entire team, and um, but I also remember the the same discussion that we're having today. Of um, and so what I hear sir, is that it's the cost of doing business, that you've made a business decision, you trust your, your, your employees, and when they make the wrong decision, that's, you just got to pay the cost of doing business because you're, you, you, you want to be efficient and you don't want to sit there and make the people that come to your store go somewhere else because they don't want to show an ID. That's what I heard you say today. You have a license to legally sell a drug, and it and it's a and it's a, a license that takes it's a lot of responsibility that goes along with that. This board can take that license away today, and if you think it's funny and you're I, smiling I don't, sir, at me, my, my frustration is that that I know nobody more than me agrees with you, and for many 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 years, all of these years, I have done everything that I can do not to be here. You know what I mean? You know, so, and, and you're only hearing a part of what I'm saying to you. You know what I mean? The business part is yes, it is that, but the, you know, there's always that, that's only a small part of that. But uh, you know, again, you know, I, not, nothing, nothing about this is funny, sir. You know, I am trying to really contain my frustration at the moment. For that, I apologize. Because you know, we should be on the same team. We should not be on opposing teams to make the situation better. As far as you know, this here, and I feel like yeah, two and a half years ago, we very much felt that we wanted to be on the same team and, and do whatever we could to, to make sure that your business doesn't fail. We don't want any business to fail, but we also don't want any any child to be end up being dead out there um, on the highway. Agreed. So, so anyway, um, I I question if if. You, I'm going to do something here today. We're going to do something different. We're going to make sure the, the penalty is sufficiently high enough that something can change because we don't want you coming in here again because eventually we're going to be forced to take your license from you because there's a certain point that we have to. By law, it's, it's no longer an option. So my motion is a $1,000 penalty on the tobacco sale. Okay. I'll second the motion. We have a second. Do we have any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have one nay. Right? Actually, I sustain. I'm oh, so sustain. Just... Okay. One substantion. He abstains. Richard didn't vote. Okay. Okay. I need to be able to be the person with the back. Mr. President, you have 10 days to pay the fine, and you may, within 30 days of today, appeal the decision to the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County. Do you understand, sir? Yes, sir. I wish you the best of luck, and hope we... we... Yeah. Brad. Lighthouse, employee, Chang Curl Kang. The above individual, Shang Curl Kang, was an employee of a license holder and sold or provided alcoholic beverages to an individual under the age of 21 years in violation of 6-304, the alcohol beverage article of the Annotated Code of Maryland, and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. Okay, my name is Chang Kang, 7765 Ann Howard Driver, Port Tobacco, Maryland, 20677. Okay, thank you. Please come forward and have a seat. And Young S. Song, a counsel. Okay, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, sir. Um, did the events take place? Did, 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 this, did you make the sale? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Beaver, can you read in the facts, sir? Yeah, sure, Mr. Chairman. The facts underlying this uh, violation are as follows. On December 28, 2023, at approximately 4.30 p.m., 
uh, the sheriff's office um, alcohol enforcement unit sent a sheriff's office cadet 18 years of age into Lighthouse Liquors located at 30411 Three Notch Road in Charlotte Hall, Maryland. Confidential informant entered the premise and retrieved an alcoholic beverage, beverage specifically a 750 milliliter bottle of Andre uh, Strawberry Moscato and placed it on the counter uh, for purchase. The clerk later identified as Chang Carl Kang uh, failed to ask the confidential informant for identification uh, for proof of age and completed the sale of the alcoholic beverage. The confidential informant then exited the store with the alcoholic beverage and made contact with Corporal Patrick Handy and Deputy Stephen Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit, where the confidential informant provided a description of the sale. Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers entered the establishment and made contact with Mr. Kang. The officers identified themselves and informed Mr. Kang that he had served an alcoholic beverage to an underage sheriff's office confidential informant. Mr. Kang admitted to not asking for identification prior to the sale of the alcoholic beverage. Mr. Kang was informed by the officers that an offense report would be completed and that he and the licensees would be issued summonses to appear before this board. Photographs of the alcoholic, bever of the alcoholic beverage were captured on the officer's body-worn cameras and were placed into evidence. All this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. You're welcome. Members, questions? Is it, is it Kong or Kang? Kang, Mr. Kong, yes. Uh, Mr. Kong, would you mind describing in your own words uh, what happened that day? Yeah, that's uh, December 28th. Uh, can you, can you speak into the microphone? December 28th, around 5 o'clock. Like, that day is kind of busy because of a big holiday coming. That's mm -hmm. why I didn't pay attention. That's, that's my mistake. I check, I did always, always. I work like a legal business more than 25 years. The first time it happened that day, December 28th. I don't even, I, I cannot even, I didn't pay attention that day. One day, big mistake, I did, yes. Okay. Was, was there something going on that day or what, the, what, what caused your lack of judgment on this particular day like, after 25 years? Like of December 28th, big, big holiday coming. December 31st is the biggest holiday. That's why I didn't, I was that day, I put up some liquor, wine, Everything I, I took care of that day, and then I didn't pay attention. I mean, one day mistake, <laughs> that's it. Okay. Yeah. One time mistake, yeah. All right. Can you, you said, uh, did I hear you correctly, that you said you've been in this business 25 years? Yes, I work, I, as a clerk, I work the same, I mean, same legal business like 25 years. Okay. First time it happened, very first time it happened, for 25 years. How, how long have you been with the Lighthouse? Lighthouse, eight years. Eight years? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what sort of uh, training have you had uh, since you've been employed with the Lighthouse? Yes, oh, my boss told me every, every day, every single time, you have to check ID. I, I did. Every day, I, under 35 years, I check ID. But that day, it happened. You know, one day, one time, it happened, yes. Okay. Any further questions? Okay. Anybody else? George? No, sir. No, I don't have any, any questions. Okay. Do we have a motion? I make a motion of of uh, a fine of one hundred fifty dollars to uh, I guess should read all this here to uh, Mr. Shane Kuro Kang. Yes. Um, for the violation at the lighthouse for selling beverage, alcohol beverage to an individual under age 21 in the violation of code 6-304 of alcohol beverage article of the annotated code of Maryland and 5.04J of the rules and regulation of alcohol beverage board of St. Mary's County. Okay, we have a motion for $150 fine. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. We have a second. Okay, uh, Mr. Watt seconded. Uh, do we have any discussion? George? No, sir. No? No, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, Mr. Kang? Yes. Okay. My apologies for the first time. Okay. Um, you have 10 days to pay the fine, and you may, within 30 days from today, appeal the decision to the Circuit Court of St. Mary's. Do you understand, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. See Susie, please. Thank you. Hope you have the rest of your days good. Susie. 
licensee. Now be ye, now be ye, Daniel Hahn and Joshua L. Schaefer. Sale of alcohol beverage to a person under the age of 21 in violation of 6-304 of the alcohol beverage article of the Annotated Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Each of you please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Daniel Hahn, uh, 6240 uh, Solomon's Island Road, Tracy's Landing, uh, Maryland, zip code 20779. My name is Nabi. I um, live in 6240 Solomon's Island Road, Tracy's Landing, Maryland, 20779. I am the uh, one of the licensees. Okay. My name is Joshua Schaefer. I live at 30140 Gershwin Road, Charlotte Hall, Maryland. Okay. Thank you. Please come forward and have a seat. I guess I'll pose this question to all three licensees. Did this event take place in sale? Yes. Did the sale take place? We'll stipulate to the facts as read in the record. It did take place. Okay. Mr. Beaver. Yeah. Even though counsel has stipulated, I'll go ahead and read them into the record one more time if that's all right. On uh, December 28, 2023, at 4.30 p.m., St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent to Sheriff's Office Confidential Informant 18 years of age into Lighthouse Liquors located at 30411 Three Notch Road in Charlotte Hall, Maryland. The confidential informant entered the premise and retrieved an alcoholic beverage, specifically a 750 milliliter bottle of Andre Strawberry Moscato and placed it on the counter for purchase. The clerk, later identified as Chang Carl Kong, uh, failed to ask the confidential informant for identification for proof of age and completed the sale of the alcoholic beverage. The confidential informant then exited the store with the alcoholic beverage and made contact with Corporal Patrick Handy and Deputy Stephen Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit, where the confidential informant provided a description of the sale. Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers uh, entered the establishment and made contact with Mr. Kong. The officers identified themselves and informed Mr. Kong that he had served an alcoholic beverage to an underage sheriff's office confidential informant. Mr. Kong admitted to not asking for identification prior to the sale of the alcoholic beverage. Uh, Mr. Kong was informed by the officers that an offense report would be completed and that he and the licensees would be summoned to appear before this board. Photographs of the alcoholic beverage were captured on the officers' body-worn cameras and all of this and placed in evidence and all of this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. Members, questions? Yeah. Um, I'll just address the licensees in general. Uh, could one of you guys describe your training process uh, for your employees? Um, every three years, we got uh, certification and training and RAST too, mm -hmm. yes. That at, for each of your employees, you require recurrent training every three years? Every three years, sir. Yeah. Okay. Just for clarification, if I may. Um, Please use the microphone. This is not a, a business that has uh, like multiple employees. It's just like the owners and Mr. Kong. Um, and so uh, it's not a situation where you have uh, routine uh, you know, new employee, uh, like orientation or training. Okay. So. Yep. Fair. Thank you. Okay. Um, could you describe, I guess, your policy then on, uh, on age verification? I wasn't even part of the organization when this exactly. happened. Yeah. We, uh, require the ID every customers and it looks like on the 37 or 40. But uh, December 28th, Thursday, um, my attention is loosened because at least a holiday come and delivery coming and stop. And then she, the customers, uh, she a uh, lot of questions about the party. And after 10 minutes, lose const, you know, attention. I so forgot to ask ideas. So this is really big mistake. 
So, uh, Mr. Hahn, so if I were to walk into your store and with all my gray hair, I would order a beverage, would I be asked for age verification? Yeah, we check ID every customer, yeah, even regular, you know, yeah, okay. regular customer too. And that is a requirement that you had of Mr. Kong as well? Yes, yes, sir. always to talking about that and then ask ID, ask ID, but we lose that because holiday coming <laughs> and right. lose concentration. Sure. I thought he going to check and he, he thought I check <laughs> because only he and me, we work together, so... This is mistakes. So did I hear you correctly that there was, sounds like there was a miscommunication between yeah, you myself. and him as to who had checked the ID? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because he, uh, you know, nice talk to with that lady. I thought, I, you know, he checked, but he didn't. And he thought maybe I checked. So, you know, look at each other. So, right. hey, <laughs> that's the mistake, sir. Yeah. Okay. Anything you, else? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. Richard, you have Okay. So, so at first I, I was a little confused and then just I was trying to uh, <laughs> I'm used to the lighthouse. When you said lighthouse, I thought I thought about and then you mentioned Solomon's and I got confused with the lighthouse restaurant. So I'm, <laughs> this is not the lighthouse restaurant in, in Calvert County, right? So we're in St. Mary's County. So I'm thinking so my question to you is how many I'm not familiar with your lighthouse restaurant. How many employees do you have uh, at your establishment that deals with sales of alcohol? Only one. Only one. Only him. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. Just Only him. Yes. Okay. Two. I'm sorry if I can just. Uh, he, he meant okay. to say. Okay. Yeah. Two. You're he solving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're saying you two are the only ones that make alcohol sales from your, your lighthouse establishment. Okay. Just clarification. Okay. Thank you. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Hahn, how, how long have you been in business? How long have you been in the liquor uh, business? This at address for here about eight, nine years. Yes. Since 2015. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. So, yeah, Mr. Hahn, what, you know, you may mention holidays coming up, things, you know, that, uh, I venture to say there's going to be future holidays that are going to come up. What sort of uh, changes do you intend to make in your in your store going forward to try to prevent this from happening again? Have you yeah, we well, have that? to be more careful. And then, so um, that day is uh, we back and up. Usually we stay at you know, catch rest area together or what. But like that, but was a stock wine is everywhere. It's a too many box case, and we went back and forth like this. So he stay alone, and then I go out, you know, stock about ten minutes, and then I come back. He stock because he he and me we stock differently. He stock usually wine and liquor. I stock with like um, beer or something. Walking box. I get in, if I get in the walking box, we, I cannot hear anything, I cannot see anything. So when I come out, he speak with her, I thought he know her, something like that. So uh, usually we communication together, did you check? Yes or not, but. You know. So, so uh, what, sort of rem what sort of reminders do you have at your point of sale or on the door or do you have any sort of reminders to help remind you when you get distracted, as you just described? Can I answer? Yes, ma'am, please. Since I am involving in the daily operation from time to time, and I also attended the class that was given by Lico Board, our ASAT, we have a booklet, and we have a various uh, instruction of verification of different driver license and different ID. We have we kept that booklet at next to the uh, cash register, and we set up a procedure. So every time when we have a customer walk into the cash register, we have to go through the procedure. That was our um, last time I mean, reminded class that we all attend all our licenses, okay. including Mr. Kang. Okay. So you so. Orange color. Okay. 
good. I'm a procedure kind of guy. So, um, so I'm hearing you say that you have an established procedure for how to, to how to execute a sale, um, and there is a reminder of that at your point of sale. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I have no further questions, Mr. Chairman. George, anything? yes, sir. No further no, questions. Right. Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll make, I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, I make a motion, uh, a fine of thousand uh, dollars with five hundred dollars in abeyance for uh, licensees Nabi Yi and Daniel Hahn and. Joshua Schaefer for the sale of alcohol beverage to a person under age 21 in violation of Code 6 304 of Alcohol Beverages Article Beverages Article of Annotated Code of Maryland 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of Alcohol Board of St. Mary's County. And Rast. And Rast. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. We have a second. We have any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Unanimous. Five. It's a it's a thousand dollar fine, five hundred held in advance, and rast training. Mem so. yeah. Members of the board. Um, I just got this question, so I'm going to pose this to you. Uh, Mr. Schaffer came into uh, this after the uh, incident took place, and so he's wondering uh, whether uh, you know, that applies to him as well. The RAS training? I did the RAS training, mm -hmm. sir, uh, a week or two ago. Okay. And I'm brand new to this. You I've only been here for about. You need to speak in the microphone. Sorry. Sorry, I've only been here for less than a month. I understand. But I did the RAS training a few weeks ago, sir. Right. So he wasn't on. He was not a member. When they a not when the violation. Not when the violation. Not when the violation. So, so I think that he should not incur another RAS class. It's up to you. But he just. He did come as a new licensee. I understand just did that. our last class. Yes, correct. but he, he, he should not be. This is not about him today. My view. Would you, he was not a license. He was not a licensee at the time, time of the violation. At the time of the violation, he was not. He was not a licensee at the time of the violation. Right. So then so. It would, the, the penalty would not, not, not apply to him. It I would agree with that. Thank you. Thank you. So no, sir. So you have ten days to pay the fine. And you may, within 30 days from today, appeal the decision to the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County. Any questions? No? no Thank, you. Thank you. Go see Susie. Thank Good you. luck. Appreciate it. Again, thank you, Mr. Beaver. Yes, sir. Next on the agenda is premise changes. Southern Trail, um, Trail Distillery. Richard Cosby, Copsey, requesting temporary extension of premises uh, um, into normal parking area and field and portable outdoor serving counter for three special events. Spring Shine Festival, May 11th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Fall Market, October 5th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Winter Markets, December 7th, 2023, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. Richard Copsey, 27305, Three Notch Road, Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Okay. <clears throat> Richard Copsey, 27305, Three Notch Road, Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Okay, thank you. Please come forward, have a seat. Okay, um, please present your application. This will be our fifth year um, doing our markets. So we just need to extend the premises for people to, when they come into the distillery and grab a cocktail while they're shopping, they can go down in the field where we have 
about 30 vendors, um, or they can go to one of the food trucks and get their food, listen to the band um, while the event's going on. And we, every year, we put up temporary fencing where the parking lot is. I actually have paid security with all my markets that make sure people do not take drinks to their car, aren't opening bottles on the premises, things like that. Um, we do have trash cans at the entry exit points so that security can say, hey, put that in there or finish it before you leave. Um, we ID everybody 100%. Um, so if you are 21 and over and you want to drink, you get a band. These three events are our only time that we allow families so that your children can come, you know, for the shopping and everything. We're not working at, a, at our full capacity at the distillery with the drinks and things. So it's more for the community. Um, but all these things are put in place so that nobody gets crazy and t decides to go drive. Questions? Yeah. How many uh, how many patrons, do, I guess, do you anticipate? I know it's hard to speculate, but... It's usually about 300. About 300? So. Okay. And then, because you, you mentioned your, your paid security um, at the at the points of entry, and I get in... Well, can you, can you describe your security plan again? So we have, like, when I have music, I have security at the door, because we are 100% ID. You don't have an ID, you're not getting in. So... These these people that help us on the weekends, they will do that. They actually, it's not the ID to come on the prop, property. It's more to make sure that nobody is taking drinks out. Nobody's bringing alcohol in. Coolers, nothing like that. Even water bottles, I don't allow. You can get water. I'll give you free water, but, you yeah. know. Okay. So how many points of entry uh, and exit? Two. Just two. Okay. And you've got security yes. paid staff on that. Okay. All right. I had no further questions, Mr. Chairman. I've never heard of any problems at any of your events. No. So. <laughs> there are no problems. Everybody has a Basically, good time. Basically, it's the same same routine as the other yes. times. Okay. Conditions? Just one condition, and they know, and they always they always go. They need their special event permit from land use for each event. Yes. So. And I'm turning those in tomorrow. I was late. We were. We were at a food show at the beginning of the week. So <laughs> didn't get it done. So if you're going to give them a 30-day conditional yeah. would be... Okay. And the, so they'll get the, the... They can get all three special They get events. all three yeah. with... Okay. That's my question. That's what I do each each year. I, just, yep. I take them and turn them all in, and then I take them to her. Gotcha. Okay. So 30-day conditional. And um, on... You said um, land use? That is who that they is would the, get those permits right. from. Yep. Somebody want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion uh, that we approve the request for temporary extension of premises uh, for Southern Trail Distillery. Licensee is Richard Copsey into normal parking area and field and the portable outdoor serving counter for the three special events, the Spring Shine Festival, May 11th, 2024, from 10 to 5, market, or fall market, October 5th, from 10 to 5, and the winter market, December 7th, from 10 to 5. Uh, one correction, your December 7th says 2023. So oh, On my agenda, you mean? Yep. I'm sorry. So I'll make sure that that is, <laughs> correct that is the correct year. Um, and that will be a 30-day conditional approval uh, conditioned upon uh, event permit from land use. Yep. Okay. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. Hill, Member Hill seconds it. Any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Rudergarden, Geraldine A. LaRue, requesting temporary extension of premises and outdoor serving counter for special event, Renfest Southern Maryland, May 25th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, board, Miss LaRue is unable to be here. She's out of the country for a funeral for a family member. Her son, who's also an owner, uh, Rafe LaRue is, she gave permission for him to speak on her behalf. Okay. Do you hear about declaring or affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Please state your name and address for the record. Name is Raphael LaRue. Uh, address is 22795 Longmore Street, Leonardtown, Maryland, 20650. Okay. Please come forward. Mr. LaRue, my condolences. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And um, go ahead and present your application, sir. Sure. Um, so we're requesting a, a temporary extension of our license premise uh, with uh, outdoor uh, a, a, an area for um, us to sell beer outside for a Renaissance Festival that we plan on having uh, May 25th. Um, the uh, <coughs> festival would include uh, basically having a five foot tall chain link fence to cover a premise that is um, on one side of the business uh, where our current parking lot is, which is about a 60 by 160 square foot space, and then a pathway um, along our garden area, just directly outside of our garden area, uh, that leads to a bigger space that's on the opposite side of uh, Shepherd's Old Field. Uh, that space is approximately uh, 200 uh, by 160 feet. Square, square feet um, and the event is pretty much as indicated as we're trying to have like a Southern Maryland Renaissance Festival <clears throat> obviously on a much smaller scale than they do up in Annapolis uh, but we figured uh, with uh, you know the uh, colonial and historical roots that are in Southern Maryland it's something that would be appropriate to start start doing um, hopefully uh, if, if all goes well on an annual basis uh, we do uh, my <coughs> Mother did meet with the uh, fire marshal on April 1st, um, who basically advised her to, uh, on different points of egress in the event of an emergency, uh, fire marshal recommended uh, seven points of egress, and also that uh, we create an egress plan that we post during the event space, which we plan on doing, and we also plan on training staff to assist in the event of uh, an emergency exit. And it is, to my knowledge, we received uh, approval from Leonardtown on March 11th. Do you have an, any other questions? <laughs> I have. Um, yes, please. So, go. yes, I, if you wouldn't mind sending, I, this would be conditioned on us getting the fire marshal reports, his, his recommendations from you, a copy of. Okay, just a copy with the egress points updated? Or? Whatever, he, he should have written a report. Okay. Okay, so copy that, and then right. also the health department stated that you would need a special event permit from them. Okay. So those are the two, health and fire. All righty. Okay. But I'm glad you called the fire marshal out. I appreciate that. All credit goes to mom. I'm just here while she's in England, so. What kind of vendors are you having here? Uh, to my knowledge, it would be vendors that you would be used to seeing at a Renaissance Festival, so people to sell um, different types of um, art. Um, and I, uh, if To be completely honest, I haven't been intimately involved. I'm a kind of a uh, not an active owner, so to speak, of the beer garden. I have a 9-5 job for, uh, working for a defense contractor, so I just do what my mom tells me. <laughs> um, but she usually does a pretty good job of uh, coordinating with you know governmental officials and um, in coordinating things like this. Uh, we do have currently at Bruder Garden um, <clears throat> an axe throwing uh, business that operates out of our uh, currently licensed space. Uh, so they're they're doing a lot of work in helping us uh, find volunteers um, to help us assist in. Um, you know, trash pickup and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so yeah, to, to my knowledge, they're pretty much just different artisan vendors. Um, those would be the vendors that we'd have there. Anything that similar to what you would see at the Renaissance festival, but on a lower scale. So we're not going to be having any 
events that um, circle around the state of Maryland's sport. Uh, uh, fen uh, land jousting. Jousting, no, sir. <laughs> okay. Very good. So the, I see on the application, you talk about the two points of, uh, the two entrances, um, and then, but then the, the diagram shows several gates. I don't know if, I, I, I'm presuming the gates were updated based on fire marshals. So those gates are existing gates that are emergency exit gates of our existing space that's fenced off. Oh, okay. And uh, then the uh, the area that has the diagonal lines crossed through it would be uh, where we're requesting the extension with the um, chain link fence surrounding surrounding that space. Gotcha. And so with the so how many points of ingress and egress into the to the new area? Um, out of the extended premise? Correct. Okay, so that would be seven um, exits with three over on the um, uh, left-hand side. Okay. And um, with four over on the right-hand side, only because that, that small sliver there, there's a, there's a space to uh, exit there out of the space. However, that exits into the woods, so we needed to provide a space for people to egress off to the right-hand side, right. the top right-hand side of your picture. Um, so that's why there's there's four spaces there. Okay. Is there any way to get in those uh, those uh, access no. points or exit only? Uh, exit only, is to my knowledge. Picture. Yes, sir. All right. And then how many security staff? I couldn't quite read this. Is this 10 security? Is that correct? There will be 10 something at all times? Yes, sir. Okay. So... I get the fences that are pre-exist. I mean, the gates that are pre-existing, and you have a chain link fence around this. So, but this drawing doesn't show any exits from the chain link fence. And the the only reason that is is because my mother wasn't able to meet with the fire marshal until April first, and she submitted the application before. Okay, so this is not going to be the final drawing. Correct. Well, I we can provide an updated drawing. Um, yeah, that please, I'll add that to the contingency. Yeah. Okay. So you had something you produced for the fire marshal, or he scratched up on, right? He something that my mother okay. scratched up on based off his recommendation. Okay. Not right. any other questions. That was pretty thorough. Okay. Richard. All right. I don't have any questions. I'm Barbara. Good. No. I'm good. good. I'm good. Do we have a motion? I can make a motion. Please, sir. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve the request for temporary extension of premises for the Brewer Garden, uh, Geraldine LaRue, uh, for the outdoor serving counter for special event Renfest Southern Maryland, May 25th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. That is a 30 day conditional on Fire Marshal. Uh, the event permit from the health department and an updated uh, plan drawing. Understood. How many? I'm sorry, I didn't hear how many days. Thirty days. Thirty days. Yes, ma'am. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, Barbara seconds. A any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Good luck. Thank you very much. You all have a great day. You too. You too. Okay, next is the uh, board administrator report. Tammy. Okay. I can get my chair to sign that. Uh, let's see. So, ah, FY25 budget. We put in and requested that our inspector be in position be made full time. Um, it was not uh, approved, the request, and so I am asking the board. Um, we can do an appeal, um, and I've given you a draft of what that appeal would look like, and what I need to know is if the board would make a motion, if the board wants an appeal, I would need you to make a motion um, ordering me to submit the appeal. 
I'll make a motion to submit the appeal as written. I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a first, we have a second. Got them? George is second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And, Unanimous. And uh, don't let me let you go because I'll need you to sign the appeal paperwork and I hope. Right here? Oh, yes, please. Both both pages. And then I hope maybe the chair might be able to go with me when I <laughs> tell me fight with it. <laughs> oh, to, to, to the process of the meeting? I'll second that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Peace. <laughs> Way to flick that booger. Uh, um, second item on here is the uh, rules and regs changes. We're going to try and get an updated book out by July. There's a lot of typos and whatnot, but what I want to know, we do have two bills that were submitted that I know have passed. Uh, the nonprofit theater bill passed with amendments. They are requiring them to uh, obtain out to purchase their alcohol from a distributor versus a retailer. Nonprofits are normally allowed to purchase either way, um, but there was some contention and confusion or concern about them uh, purchasing with a, with a permanent license, purchasing from a retailer. So the legislator would only pass it with that stipulation that they would have to go through the three-tier system like a retailer would. So, but that's, that's passed and the um, dis, uh, spirit tasting has passed. I believe, I, uh, I'm gonna let these gentlemen over here when they come on their time to speak to some of the state bills that might have passed. But for the rules and regs, we will definitely need to put language in for those two bills. So I'll be presenting that to you. Uh, next month to yes, look at. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, does the board have any uh, thoughts or recommendations for language for changes in the rules and regs? Um, I don't at this time. Not at this time? Okay. No? Okay. Then you're stuck with whatever we give you. I think, I think there is something else I, we should talk about in the future, though, about this. And that's a possibility of actually having it in a um, an alternate member to the set of beverage board that would have to go legislative understand mm -hmm. but the problem is is scheduling of, of the facility and we've been three people in here before and I would rather be able to have a situation where we have an alternate that can sit and fill in um, like some other boards and commissions do mm -hmm. and um, they would also most likely be the, you know, would have a leg up being fully appointed later on when somebody rotates out so that it will keep, I think it'll, it'll give us a better board. You're thinking kind of like the Board of Elections has alternates, correct? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ethics Commission has al alternates and okay. some other ones do, I'm sure. So. Okay. That'll probably take a little research and, um, because we're talking a historical change here, Yes, right? but it would provide our customers Right, with with continued no no worries of not having yes. a form. I got you. Okay. Anything else, Tammy? That is it for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, enforcement coordinator report. Good afternoon. <clears throat> we had a busy march. Um, we went to. Uh, 17 locations, basically restaurants only, and we had five violations. Um, in addition to that, later on in the month, we also went to uh, 10 tobacco establishments and had four violations. Nothing dealing with the alcohol beverage board licensees, but they were busy month. Um, the five violations actually surprised me, but we can uh, work through that. Uh, as far as um, the sheriff's office, we had 14 individuals arrested for DUI. I conducted two exterior surveillance for shoulder tap and parking lot consumption. And I also attended three training events, one of which with alcohol and two with the sheriff's office. And no violations at the county parks that I visited. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Okay, board inspector report. Mr. Hall. Uh, 
Uh, good afternoon. Since the last board meeting, uh, 11 inspections, uh, three or four follow-ups. I did a, ran into a place yesterday. We checked just checking on a problem we thought we may have heard about, but it, everything was fine. Um, rash training, the mailer calls. So very good. Board members, any questions? No. Okay. Thank you, sir. Beverage Association. Good afternoon. Please come forward. Good afternoon, uh, David Dent and Joe Curley on behalf of the Licensed Beverage Association. Um, I guess like Tammy alluded to, if you'd like, uh, with your permission, we'll start off with uh, some of the legislation updates. Please, sir. Uh, uh, the first one that uh, we spoke about at the last meeting was uh, the direct shipment and delivery by manufacturers. Um, this bill was passed with amendments, and the amendments were it took out the direct shipping. So in other words, uh, you can't use a third carry UPS to ship either in Maryland or out of Maryland. Um, and that hopefully negates the lawsuit that was brought because of that procedure was being allowed during COVID. So, but what it, uh, it that still allows um, the manufacturers to use their own employees to make deliveries um, to residential properties. It's just not, you can't ship it. So um, that was our biggest, uh, uh, opposition to the bill was the actual direct shipment. Um, the <clears throat> the bill did, nicknamed the DoorDash bill. Um, it was uh, support. It was uh, passed with some of our uh, amendments that we had asked for. Um, <clears throat> the amendments that we had in making it a local law, so the delivery companies cannot operate unless the local liquor board adopts regulations for it. Uh, limiting delivery to the jurisdiction where the retailer is licensed, um, ensuring that the sales transaction is made by the licensed retailer, not on the platform of the delivery company. Um, and then given the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Cannabis Commission the authority to adopt regulations to make sure it's, a, it's an orderly change. So basically what I guess the gist of that is it's up to the local board to figure out whether they want to allow a third party delivery to be used by retailer. And it can only be, um, the sale has to be still completed at, you know, at the store. It, you can't complete it on the platform of the DoorDash. You know, it has to be like on our line, online platform and we complete the sale and then we contact the delivery company to make the delivery. Mm -hmm. And again, it's only at the local liquor board will allow it. St. Mary's County, we don't allow delivery. So it's, unless that changes, it's, doesn't have too much to do with okay. us. Uh, next is uh, the one nicknamed, well, it's the Class A licensed food, food retailers, the supermarket bill um, that did not pass. Uh, the beer and, uh, well, the other bill too would be uh, the allowing more than one liquor license per retailer. Uh, I think the legislation was allow up to four as long as they were in different jurisdictions. Um, but that bill also failed, so that's not going to uh, come about. Um, alcohol tax increase, um, which we opposed, uh, was not was not passed. It failed. Local sales tax, uh, we also opposed that, and it also failed. Uh, lottery commission reduction, um, we were opposed that. We didn't have as much luck with that. We were able to claw back a quarter percent for... Um, ticket sales, but we lost 1% on ticket caches. So, um, what that means is if you, if you cash a ticket, you get uh, used to get a 3% commission, now we'll get a 2% commission. Um, and then the iLottery, uh, uh, we opposed that and that also failed. Okay. And then obviously the two uh, local bills that Tammy talked about. Um, the, the tasting bill went through the uh, other bill for Arts people, um, the change was on a permanent license, you have to buy from a uh, uh, wholesaler instead of a retailer. I think that was the only change right there. That's all I saw, yeah. Well, it sounds like you had a good session then. Yes, sir. Overall. Overall. Uh, and, you know, in most of these things, so we have to fight them annually. So 
Um, I would expect to be back here talking about them next year as well. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. I have a question about what we call the grocery chain store bill yes. for the last since I started working here, right? Because um, I happened to notice on on um, one of the bill submissions, the, the form, it, there's a question, has this been submitted or a like bill like this submitted in the last two or three sessions? Mm -hmm. Does that mean they frown upon it when it's already been submitted? Because I know I've, we've we've had stuff that like that. They're like, well, that came last year and we failed it, so we don't want to see it again. But I noticed the chain store, grocery store, keeps coming back every year, regardless of that. So I mean, money. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the answer to everything, right? But there's no. I, I guess it doesn't stop them, huh? They're no, not. It's, they're not a, doesn't, it's not a prohibition. No. It just gives. It informs the committees whether they okay. whether it's been considered okay. in the past. Okay. Right. Um, Joe, do you have anything to add? No. no. Anybody have any questions about anything? The legislation. No. All right. Well, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Thanks, guys. Take care. See you later. Okay, uh, board time. Anybody have anything? Yeah, for me, I one of the session where I uh, abstained or sustained regarding the tobacco. I, I I just wasn't familiar with that aspect of it. I, I need to get a little more educated in terms of that. It's it's the first time. I, the I was, vi the violation that you were that you were discussing was not the tobacco violation per se because that's not within your purview. It was the violation of of your own regulations five. 0.04b, which says that a licensee is not allowed to permit um, a, a law to be broken, other laws to be broken on their on their license premise. So, the underlying predicate was the violation that was the tobacco violation. They they underage the underage sale of tobacco, right? That was that. So that was that occurred. They were cited. They went to court, um, and the court. They pled guilty before the court for that violation. So the violation before this board was the violation of its own rules and regulations, 5.04b, again, which says any licensee that allows the, you know, the breaking of another law on its, on its premises is prohibited. So that's what you were looking at. Example, if you're a bartender and you kill somebody, <laughs> you know, that is a violation of Maryland law, and that would be, a reason to revoke a liquor license. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it could be any rule, regulation, federal, state, that if, if the licensee, if it occurs on the license premise, whatever it may be, um, this board then has, under, under its own rules and regulations, has the right to then call the licensee before it and say, hey, we, we are aware that you violated that. It's a violation of our rules and regulations that you let that happen. Mm -hmm. And then you're here to, to, to talk about that. And for more practical, because we have had in the past, because I know it's, we list what law they broke in here, but that's mm -hmm. not, like Chris said, that's not what you're looking at. You're looking at that they broke a law, period. Mm -hmm. But we've had where the health department has um, put sanctions and found a business guilty on a health code violation, and we've brought them under the same 504 b So at, at one point we had a, um, a wastewater management issue, and you know, they came before the board after the health department was like, found them because it's under the health department's purview. We don't we don't regulate their septic systems, right? But the health department found them in violation of, and then sent that report to us. And then this board, we brought it before the board. And the same thing is true with with tobacco. That tobacco falls within the purview of the health department, the, the regulation tobacco. But just for a moment clarification, they didn't get penalized twice for the violation of tobacco, right? They they were. The, no, they so no. The answer so again. Take the tobacco out of it. They, they were charged with a crime, found guilty in district court okay. for a crime, okay. which violates your bylaws. Right. Just take the tobacco out of it. I, any crime. Any crime. Right. right. It's okay, not so double jeopardy. Okay, so they got there's, there's no no double jeopardy. Right. Don't, it's separate. They should, yeah. I mean, there just the the underlying the underlying crime, the, the, the sale of, un, of tobacco to a minor, okay, was prosecuted by the district court. Okay. Okay? Done. You called the licensee in here for not for that, 
You called him in here for violating your rules and regulations. Understood. Okay. Understood. Right. Right. It could have been for. It could have been anything. Like you say it could have been a murderer. It could have been whatever. You fill in the blank on the predicate. We call that a predicate. We call that right. But it could be anything. You're not. But you weren't going to question them about the under the underlying predicate. You were asking about the violation of your rules and regulations, right? Right. Understood. So your question, as far as being charged twice, is because he was. You're not being charged twice. No, but. The second um, violation. violation was $1,000, and the first one was for the underage sale the sales alcohol. of alcohol. You had two charges. So it's two out. charges. Understood. But I guess my question is when he was first at the, at the, uh, the violation of tobacco, was he charged a fine for that? And it's not the license. And it's not the, not the licensee. It's the, it was the, the clerk who sold it that's, that's charged with it. Clerk, okay. Okay. Clerk. And your okay. rules and your rule and regulation says if an if the licensee, an agent, an employee can, has lets that happen on their premise, then they're in violation of five oh four B. Yeah, I was, I was assuming for the tobacco. No sir, no sir. It's just the it's the actual the clerk who actually does the sale of the of the tobacco. That is, yeah. I I just need to become more familiarized with that aspect. So that's why I said yes, sir. Basically, abstain. So. Yeah, understood. <clears throat> and she was already fined over at district court. Gotcha. Um, well, when you're ready. Motion to adjourn. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you have second. A second. A second. <laughs> Increasing violation fines. So you tasked me. Yes, with, I uh, did. With putting together language. Yes. The language is very easy for the law. I've given you a copy of what is existing in code. Yes. I highlighted and put in italics the $1,000 fine that's currently in code. All this board, if you want to increase your fines, that's the only thing that you have to make a decision is what do you want to increase it to? And we would change that $1,000 to whatever your max limit you, this board decided on. Okay. Right? That is zero to the end of it. Right. I mean, that's if, if that's you want to just increase the fine, if you wanted to change the structure of it, that would be a different. Yeah, structure different and how you how you um, go about implement it, it. How you would implement go it. Implement it. Rules and regs. Would go on your rules and regs. So this would actually right. So if you want to, this is the cap. Right. right? You this don't. Is, you don't. You don't even look at your rules and regs and stuff unless this gets passed. You know, right. once we submit. Yeah. So can we get this on the agenda for next month to vote on that number? Well, that number is the current. You haven't given us a number. I understand that on a new number. Could if you want. Mm -hmm. Yes. Read this over. Think about it. Next meeting, we'll resolve this. We'll we'll vote on it. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. okay. And next month is going to be very busy. Yeah, I'm not going to be here next <laughs> month. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, okay. five violations. <laughs> um, I think we're all going to be sick that day. No, one, one of those violations. Uh, five is, violations. We're all going to be know, sick. I don't know. Yeah, oh, yeah. God. I'm going to have to be here until midnight. Like <laughs> you did when you when you did the permit. Yeah, or I, license. I have to see how the agenda. You know, we we need time, so we have a couple yeah, applications on the agenda, and he's got to make sure on. he can. He, can, he has to be able to while. actually send out subpoenas and, and issue the subpoenas. So. Okay. Is it is there a requirement oh they all have to be done in the next so many days? Like, I mean, in theory, we could split this up over yeah, two meetings? Yeah, and, and that's what I have done. When, you're, when you've got a heavy application, I try and balance it out sure. and get us in and out of here at an adequate time because sometimes we get hung up. Right. You know, so I don't want, we only have the room to yeah. like four. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and that poor door couldn't take any more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now, do, now you can do your... If okay, motion to adjourn. A second. It was, <laughs> wait a no, minute, wait a minute. Who first did it? We didn't have a first yet. Dude. You said it. You said no, it. Oh, I'll make a motion then to adjourn. Yeah, we have a motion. <laughs> I'll second Watts that. To adjourn. Second. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Bring it Mr. Shen seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Peace out. Unanimous. <laughs>